Hello there, my name is Bo and this is Bo Beats. Finding the best gifts for a music producer or synth lover is probably not the easiest of tasks. I know I rarely got what I wanted when I was growing up and my family still has trouble figuring out this music production and synthesizer hobby of mine. And honestly, who can blame them? This is quite a niche hobby. So in today's video I will go over some fun gift ideas which suits music producers and synth lovers alike. Maybe you're the one looking for a suitable gift or would you just want to nudge your friends and family in the right direction. Regardless, this video should be for you. And if you have a great idea for a gift, just drop it in the comment section so we can read about it. In last year's video I started with book recommendations and this year I'm actually going to kick things off with something even more boring. So let me show you here. This here is a super sexy cleaning kit for screens, mics and headphones and you even get a microfiber cloth. Yay! There are also many other ways to clean your stuff. You can, for example, use paintbrushes to really get in between those knobs and buttons on your synths. And there are also there are also these protective covers that can save your gear from both dust and kids, because kids can throw stuff at your expensive equipment. So that's something you could check out for a gift, and it might also be a good sort of investment saving your gear in the long run. So while cleaning equipment is a little bit boring, I still think that it could be a thoughtful and inexpensive gift to give somebody who has a lot of expensive equipment. Just make sure that you're getting stuff that won't damage the gear. Now as adults we might not put up that many posters of our idols on the walls anymore, but how about some cool synth art or nice synth t-shirts. My friend Steve Holmes offers a very nice selection of clothing and art over at his website. He has done some really cool pixel art of many synths, both new and classics, and he's also the man behind the intro animation on this channel. And he even sent me some wrapping paper that I turned into a little piece of synth art right there. And here are some really cool postcards that he's made. Something even more personal is learning what artists or YouTube personalities your friend, relative or partner follows and look for their merch. It's often linked in the video description and it's often quite affordable. And to me it feels like a bulletproof or sure way to make somebody that you love happy. Especially a nerd. I mean, who wouldn't want to wear a really cool cuckoo t-shirt going to work, for example. <laughs> Now let's move on to the juicy stuff, synthesizers. There are plenty of small synthesizers that you can find at a reasonable price and I wanted to mention a few that I've actually played with this year and reviewed. So if you're looking for reviews on this particular product, it's on my channel as well. The first one I want to talk about here, or the two of them, are the rackets. So we have the racket drum synth here. And we have the Racket Metal, which was just released and I have a review up on the channel on it if you want to check it out. The Racket Drum Synth and Metal, they are fun URAC compatible and portable percussion synths and you can buy them either assembled, like this, or if the love in your life knows how to solder, you could get a DIY kit. Another cool synth that I want to recommend because I think it's, it's fun and makes for a good gift is this one here. It's the Gecko Loop Synth and it's perfect for anybody who is into yoga or meditation or is a little bit spiritual because it's sort of this weird and profound experience and it's kind of hard to describe so here's just a little demo that I think will showcase the kind of meditative 
qualities of this little synth here. Oh, and I forgot about this little synth here. So this is a synth that is not that much talked about. These are the craft synths, the, the craft synth and craft rhythm. This is the rhythm one, and there's a the craft synth one. They are DIY, but you can put them together without soldering. And I've reviewed it this year on the channel, and it's it's actually pretty cool. Subconscious thought. Subconscious thought. Subconscious thought. Subconscious thought. Next up, let's talk books. Last year, I remember recommending a book called Push, Turn and Move. And yeah, it's, it's still a great read, but this year I am recommending the follow-up. Ah, stuff is falling apart here. It's called Patch and Tweak. It's a beautiful book. There's plenty of information about modular synthesizers, about how to make patches, how stuff functions and what you need for a modular setup as well. My man Andrew, awesome. I wanna see if I can find it. Where, where's Div Kid? Where's my friend? Div Kid, Minor Melodies, that's awesome. White Noises, I've been checking out his channel as well. Hello there, Ben. Hello there. How are you doing? How are you doing, man? Ah, uh, there's no picture with Mylar. Next up, let's talk synth stands. Now, there are many cool synth stands for music production equipment, and my friend Mike Smith over at Synths and Wood UK offers some high quality stands. Fun fact, he was actually the first person I interviewed in my interview series with uh, synth and music production enthusiasts. So here, for example, you can see a stand for the Machina Mark III. It's really nicely built. And here is one for the Arturia Keystep, which gives you space for putting any synth module or small keyboard on the top shelf. So, if you see a Keystep or a Machina in your family member's room, this could be a good gift. And obviously, Mike from Synths and Wood UK has a lot of different stands, so be sure to check him out as well. He's a great guy, runs a great little business. The next present is something that anyone with several hardware synths might find useful, or maybe if you have older hardware synths that lacks USB. This here is a USB MIDI interface, and you simply connect it to a computer, and now you can control any synth which has a MIDI port from your computer. Since not all audio interfaces come with DIN MIDI ports, this could be interesting. It also sort of lets you hook up older synths, and sometimes you can find really nice old synths without USB MIDI used, for example, in your local music store. So that could be something for all the parents on a budget that wants to get their uh, kid something cool to play with for, for um, the winter holidays. But maybe a MIDI interface doesn't quite cut it. You're a little bit more of an advanced user, or your family member is a little bit more, you know, knowledgeable. Then I'd like to recommend the Retro Kits MIDI cable and USB MIDI host. Let me show you what that is. Let me put this to the floor. So this here is the RK005, and it lets you connect USB devices without actual MIDI ports to other MIDI devices. And this is a super useful tool that pretty much anybody with synths can use. You can basically plug one USB controller into it and send the MIDI data to any synth with a DIN MIDI port. And it also works with USB MIDI hubs. Next up, we have something brilliant in disguise. This is the RK002, and it's a smart MIDI cable. It's intelligent. It's actually quite curious. This is a brilliant gift because at first glance, it's just a MIDI cable. So your family member will be like, oh, you bought me a MIDI cable. But the thing is, it has a built-in arpeggiator that you can use with any synth that lacks one. So I think this is very brilliant. 
And RetroKits is a cool indie manufacturer that you should really check out. There are several products that are nicely priced for uh, gifting away over Christmas. And the links are, of course, in the description and in the comment section, just like for all the other stuff that I'm showcasing in this video here today. Now, this far into the video, I just want to just want to tidy stuff up a bit. Another good option is to give away subscriptions. There are subscriptions for magazines, mastering services, video services, and it's sort of a gift that keeps on giving throughout the year. Now, this lets me segue into the sponsored segment. And a good video service that I want to recommend is Skillshare. They are sponsoring today's video and has been sponsoring several videos on my channel. I've been using the service for, for quite a while now, and it's a nice little learning community. They have over 17,000 different classes, and it's a sure bet regardless of hobby, and it could be something for the entire family as well. It's also nicely priced compared to the competition, and a current favorite course that I've been watching is this one. And this course is about Ableton Live, and I've actually said that I really want to learn more about this software so I can use it here on the channel. I also have a link in the description, and the first 500 who uses it gets two months for free. So feel free to check it out, and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and making it possible for me to make it. Next up, let's talk utility items for synth lovers. And I want to show you a few products that I think could be really interesting. So everyone needs a mixer. And in last year's video, I talked about this mixer and I'm going to talk about it this year again, because I still think it's one of the best small portable mixers. And that is the Bastel Dude. It's a small, very nicely built, portable, battery powered, little mixer. It colors the sound nicely. It has a, a kind of unique sound to it. And I've actually used it in several projects. And yeah, it's been holding up really nicely for me. The next product I want to mention is the Mini Jam filter. Now, I don't have it here. I'm not entirely sure where I put it, so let's do a little B-roll segment here with the Mini Jam filter. But it's actually a really good unit. It's the only Mini Jam product that I really recommend. It does something original, unique. It's a portable battery powered filter. You can slap it onto any synth and it does add a bit of grit and an interesting character to any sound. So yeah, I recommend it. Now the next thing I want to talk about is a little bit of a, a joke here, but, but bear with me here. If money isn't a problem, I would go all out and get my beloved or family member an Electron Analog Heat Mark II unit. It's a great utility unit. It's quite, quite expensive, but it will shut your partner up for a long time and give you some peace of mind and not having to deal with the nagging about getting another synth. So it, it could be a win, I suppose, <laughs> depending on depending on what you uh, prefer and what you value. If spending that kind of cash seems uh, like folly to you, I would go, for example, with maybe um, a Go Mixer. So this is from Roland, uh, the normal Go Mixer. There's also a Go Mixer Pro. It lets you record multiple sources straight into your smartphone or, or tablet. And this way your partner can record stuff on the go, meaning you don't have to listen to the never ending talk about the next cool synthesizer when you're traveling together. Now you know that it's the thought that matters. So cables, boring, but you can't really go wrong with them. Even if you get someone a super odd cable they might not use today, you never know when it might come in handy. So for example, A bunch of Eurorack cables could be very nice to give somebody with a Eurorack system, or maybe some instrument cables, or even a super long USB cord could be great because you can always put cables to good use. Now, if there's one thing content producers can never get enough of besides cables, it's storage. So, 
Whether it's an SD card or an SSD, we are always happy for it. There are so many situations where I find myself needing an extra SD card or running out of drive space for backup. SD cards are a given. And I also recommend getting high speed ones to make sure that they will work for whoever you are giving it to. Now, USB thumb drives could be fun, but it's I, I don't really use them that often, but uh, on the other hand, when you need one, it's great to have one. And portable SSDs or hard drives are always appreciated, and you can actually find really good hard drives and SSDs for around $100 nowadays. So you don't have to go super expensive to get something good. Now, if your partner or family member is into Eurorack, there are plenty of inexpensive things that you could look for. Used modules can be found for as little as, say, $20, but it might be hard knowing what he or she needs. So utility stuff is, is always a safe bet, even though I think that a module, regardless of what it is, still, you know, hits home. But here are things, some things to consider. So something that I really enjoy are the Nurleys or Norleys from Befaco. These are super handy thumb screws that you can use without a screwdriver. And they also have some kind of built-in washer, which helps you protect modules from rack rash. And I'm not exaggerating this. When I started with Eurack, everybody told me like, get the Nurleys, Norleys, because they are amazing and it makes it so much easier just reinserting uh, and taking out modules from your Eurorack. So it's a solid gift, that's for sure. Another great option is to get some knuckle bones from Hosa, which lets you passively split signals into multiple ones. And they have this cute little pack here available, which is, is kind of cool. So that's something you could consider as well. I find them quite useful. Or you could go and check out their monkey bars. These are very handy for cable management and can be screwed into a wall, furniture or mounted on a mic boom. And as you can see, I mounted mine on these IKEA lamps because I'm Swedish. And lastly, a quite boring gift, but it's useful you could always give somebody a mic stand. I know it sounds super boring, but the thing is I often find myself looking for an extra one. It could be that I've set one up with uh, a mic for my live stream and I need one for video production or I wanna bring one with me for an event or I just need to use two mics to record some instruments. So an extra mic stand is inexpensive and it's actually a really good gift. So these were some gift suggestions from me to you. Uh, you should note that most of the stuff here was sent to me for review during the year. I, I try and only feature stuff that I've actually tested myself. I know that there is plenty of other cool stuff out there, but I, I don't really want to kind of endorse something that I haven't tried and I can't get behind. So know that these are all stuff that I've tested and the suggestions come from me actually thinking that these are good options for you. So if you have any uh, cool suggestions for gifts, be sure to leave it in the comment section. I, I know that last year we had a ton of great suggestions, so be sure to drop yours down below. And I just want to thank everybody who's been watching the channel this year. Thank you for a good 2018. I hope to see you in the next year. And if you do want to support the videos, head over to patreon.com slash bowbeats because most of my videos aren't sponsored like this one was sponsored by Skillshare and most videos aren't so be sure to go there if you want to if you want to help me be able to make even more videos for you guys I don't know how many I made this year but it was a lot of them and most were sponsored by the patrons thank you so much I hope you have a nice winter holiday and I'll be seeing you guys later